Hey guys, so I'm going to try to make a video about how I use this machine um, and how it's working for me. Of course, every setup's got its pros and cons, uh, so I'll try to be inclusive with that as I can. I'm kind of doing this video off the cuff, so if I miss a few things, I'm sorry. I'll try to type them in later, but uh, here's kind of what I got going on. So this is a Rotovac CFX ZX machine that is different than the older style cfx without the zx on the end these are upgraded motors a lot more powerful machine than it used to be the stats on it is about 165 cfm uh, and i get about 200 inches of water column lift when i when i put a gauge on the end of a 50 foot 1.5 inch hose now i want to clarify that a little bit when it comes to portables uh, water lift, HG lift, whatever terminology you want to use, that's not the problem with portable machines. Um, where they tend to fail short is the CFM. You need that CFM to get that wand to lock down to the carpet. Once it locks down, then that lift, that water column, that HG starts to take effect. Um, so where truck mounts excel is they have a lot more CFM and they pull that wand down to the carpet, but they usually release on their lift about 165. Um, this portable has no problem creating 200 inches of lift if it can get a lock down on the carpet. That is the case with all portable machines. They suffer a little bit on CFM compared to a truck mount. So the stats are 165 CFM, uh, 200 inches water column on the lift. Okay, uh, I use it in connection with a water otter. In this case, I just threw a bonnet underneath it. So I didn't have any rubber marks on the floor. I'm on a construction cleanup job here. Um, I have two of these machines and two of these machines, so I always have a backup. Uh, this is a 2.8 gallon per minute, uh, 1200 PSI water otter. Now, whether or not it actually creates 1200 PSI depends on the jets you are running on your wand, because if you just have an open flow, it's not gonna get any PSI. Those jets, those nozzles, the back pressure is what creates that PSI, right? So in my case, I run an eight flow one. I have four number two nozzles. And uh, I, this thing, when I pull the trigger, it drops around four or 500 PSI. Um, but I can run a spinner just fine with it. It does great running a spinner. So uh, let me get back on this machine a minute. I'm sorry for the scattered bit here. Uh, on the back, we got two motors, two switches. And we have auto pump out. So uh, it fills up, it triggers a switch inside, pumps out. In this case, I've run it into a toilet. Uh, I like to use the washing machine hoses because they're very durable, they're kind of stiff. Um, it's only six feet long, so I don't got a lot of mess of hose laying here. It just goes right into the toilet. Um, I can take that and dump it into the garbage disposal of a sink drain. I can I can set it into a, a, any other type of drain I wish. Uh, if you guys can legally just run it outside into the lawn, you can run up to a 50 foot line on this without any problems and just drop that line out into a flower bed somewhere. Um, but the nice thing about this machine and this setup is it always dumps legally right into a legal drain. Okay. Uh, one of the weaknesses of this machine, because as you can see, it's small. I mean, we're only what, 27 inches high or 28 inches high, if I remember right. Uh, foam, you can see the foam in there. So what I do, here we are. I keep the container hot tub defoamer. And I just put it in a squirt bottle. And when I start cleaning, I just take the end of the hose off here. And I put a few squirts right into that nozzle or right into that, that hose there and it goes in, that'll last me a whole job usually. Um, if I'm dealing with an extreme amount of foam, I might put a few squirts in per room, but it's a, it's a very negligible expense uh, for the overall process. So in this case, I've got 50 feet of two inch hose coming off of it. And what's that? A, a, probably a five foot, one and a half inch whip. I'm using a TFM 1.541. And uh, that works great. I, I'm really happy with the setup. Uh, I don't have any problems going as far as 100 feet of two inch line. I don't like running a one and a half inch uh, 
hose straight off the machine all the way out, I do notice a loss in CFM. Uh, so running a two inch hose off of this, at least up to the wand, is a, is a big help. And it's nice because you have the ability to do that with a two inch cuff on the machine. Uh, this produces really great stats compared to other machines I've, I've operated. The other nice thing is it only weighs 40 pounds, 40, 45 or something. I can just pick it up. I can set it, I could set it in the back of my car or in the trunk and just pick it up and carry it into the house. I don't have wheels to clean off when I get to the front door or worry about tracking stuff into the house. Same thing with this, it's 37 pounds. I just pick it up and carry it. It's, it's easy. So uh, coming over to this water otter again, um, again, I use a washing machine hose. It just came off the backside. In this case, in this house, uh, I used a sink adapter and I just hooked it right up to the sink, turned the hot water on. So I'm running the tank's hot water uh, and it just feeds it and out to the wand it goes every time I pull the trigger. Uh, more often than not, I will use this container here and I just set it in the sink. I let the sink dribble water in and I let that hose just pull water out of here because that water otter that we uh, were talking about will draw water from any container. I could fill a five gallon bucket and it'll draw water from it and pump it out to my wand. Uh, it, it doesn't matter. Uh, a lot of times you could, uh, I'll, I'll fill a bathtub and just add some rinse into the bathtub, drop the hose in there and clean the house with the water from the bathtub. It works fantastic. It's easy, very versatile setup. So, there's that. Um, rebuild kits, you can probably, you can rebuild it. There's two pieces to rebuilding this kit. They're each 70 bucks, so 140 bucks in about an hour of work rebuilds this pump when it's time to rebuild it. Um, I probably rebuild mine once a year. Uh, it's been working great. I have two of these pumps. Uh, I, I don't have a lot more to say on the pump aspect. Uh, I will fire this up in the end and let you kind of see it run. Um, so as you can see, the machine's got two cords. They have to be on separate circuits because they are taking all of the available power from any given circuit. You cannot put them on the same circuit. Uh, and then the, this guy, well, let me back up, I'm sorry. This machine, um, plan on 30 amps total, 15, 15. It's like 14.5, running amps or something but i mean it's right there so you want two dedicated circuits grab a kitchen outlet and grab a bathroom outlet uh, something like that get them on different circuits i don't have much trouble tripping tripping uh circuits as long as i know that i'm grabbing two different circuits so kitchen bathroom or a bathroom in a different bathroom um, keep them apart this guy he runs at about 10 and a half amps Roughly, it'll go down seven, six. It might spike 11, depending on the PSI you're running and a few other factors. But uh, again, he needs his own his own circuit. So all together, three different circuits. This is an amazing tile and grout cleaning system because tile and grout uh, cleaning with a spinner is a very high volume of water. And this thing will just pump and pump and pump and keep putting it under the toilet so you don't ever have to stop. Once you set this up, you start cleaning your house, whether it's carpet cleaning or tile and grout cleaning, you don't have to stop to babysit or refill or empty these machines. So it takes me about 10, 12 minutes to set these up. It's pretty quick. At first, it takes you a little longer, but once you get used to it, you get very fast with it. Um, like I said, I do not typically hook straight up to a sink like this. Sometimes you turn that faucet on and you find out you got a leak down below. And then what are you gonna do? Uh, in this case, I didn't have a lot of options um, and it was easy to hook up and I could tell if I was getting a leak or not, so I didn't care. So I usually set that little container into the kitchen sink, let the faucet feed into the container, let the hose pull from the container and feed the pump. Okay, uh, let's see. I'm trying to think, okay, so in this case, um, I didn't wanna deal with trying to find three different outlets so I keep two, two Honda generators with me. I like having ones I can pick up and carry because I can use them for other purposes if I want. Uh, lighting or, or run a different machine or 
uh, just a little more versatility. Plus, uh, it's not sitting in my trailer or in my van running, which is actually technically illegal. Um, the way a lot of carpet cleaners are doing it and the way I've done it in the past. But having these, being able to just grab them, lift them out, set them on the pavement, boom, problem done. I can use them or I don't have to use them. I probably use them 15, 20% of the time in my day-to-day -day activities, depending on whether or not I want to deal with the house power or if I want to use one of mine and create the power. Um, having two separate machines also saves me fuel when I don't want to use the full capacity of a larger uh, generator. So I'm going to fire these up right now. I'm going to stop talking. Uh, I'm going to start these up and I'm going to let you watch this thing go in just a moment. Uh, my last discussion I want to have with you is heat. Obviously we are dependent on the heat of the house with this system. Uh, and you know 100 100, 110, 120, 130 degrees, depending on the depending on the home. A lot of homes are coming now with these on-demand heaters that will produce heat as long as you clean, and you will always have that 120 degrees or whatever they've got to set at. Um, if in the few occurrences you wish you had more heat or you really need it, um, with the flow of a system like this, eight flow, uh, even a six flow, you want something. 2600 watts or higher 2600 watts would be my bare minimum because that would just barely get me something if i was didn't actually have hot water to work with at all uh, i like having a 4500 watt system my tea makes a small 4500 watt uh, inline heater that's rated for 600 psi uh, and it's a two cord system that gets complicated when you already have a three cord system now you're trying to get five different circuits. So having these generators could be very helpful for getting heat when you want when you want heat. Uh, before my T came out with that heater, I built a custom heater. It's right here, out of a toolbox, believe it or not. And it's also 4,500 watts. So um, I use it occasionally. I like having the generators because like I said, most of the time I run my, my extractor and my pump off of the outlets in the house. But when I want to run this heater, almost all the time, I want to run these two generators because these two generators at full capacity will power that 4,500 watt heater. And I can maintain 150, 170 degree water without any problems. I can get hotter a lot hotter but when i'm running an eight flow system uh, that's that's pumping out a lot of water a minute um, so having a machine having a heater that can keep up with that is important um, the other nice thing about this obviously as you can see is it's a lot bigger than a mit uh, 4500 watt heater so it is actually storing a lot more hot water which means when you pump out a lot of hot water you're not starting all over with cold water again. It can keep up a little bit better. Um, so I've held off buying buying a MIT 4500 watt heater. Although I will say this, if they had made that machine before I decided to build this thing, I would have just bought MIT's 4500 watt heater because this was a pain in the neck to build. I'm, I would have just gone that direction. Okay, I'm rambling. Anyways. So I'm going to start up these generators. I'll start this machine. I'll start the uh, water otter. The faucet's already turned on and I'll go ahead and clean a little bit, okay? Um, right now I'm using just the faucet water. If you got your chemistry right and you've got some experience carpet cleaning, a lot of us portable user users are starting to lean away from needing so much heat. We want all that power to be able to get the most CFM and the most lift we can, to be able to get the very best out of our uh, out of our solution system, uh, PSI and gallons per minute. We want all that power maximizing that. And with today's chemistry, if you know what you're doing, you can do amazing work without superheating your, your, your solution. Um, so that's something to think about. Uh, for those spots, 
when it's time to steam a spot out or something, if, 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 if you want to go that direction, you know, get, get yourself a little, a little hand steamer. That works great. A little hand steamer, and pull that out the rest of the way. Here's a hand steamer. Plug it in, let it sit on that spot, and uh, help get that red stain out or whatever it is you're trying to get rid of. Um, get a little candle wax out, whatever. Um, you don't always have to have, try to figure out how to have 170 degree water to clean the carpet. Uh, I don't need to bake them, I just need to get them clean. So I'm gonna start everything up, okay? Here we go. This is the auto pump out switch, motor one, motor two. on this machine so I can make sure I can empty it all the way. Plugs here. Now the machine's unplugged. I'm going to take the hose off the front. And set it. Set it right on the toilet. I put a drain cuff on the bottom so after I'm done pumping out I can empty it out the rest of the way. This was a construction plane. There's a lot of drywall dust is all this is. But this gets it the rest of the way empty. Okay. Uh, this does not come stock. Rotovac will not recommend it. Um, this was something I added on later. I did it to both of my CFX machines and it's just been a great fit. Okay. Cap back on. Bring that up. Look at that, one hand. I can just walk with it wherever I want. Do do do. Set that out here. That is, that's just terrible, isn't it? Such a bulky thing to have to haul around. Alright, like I said, there's pros and cons with every machine. You've got more components with this, you got to carry in and out than you do with a, with a uh, inclusive, more inclusive portable that's got its own waste tank and drain tank but it's an easy setup and tear down it's just quick up and down stairs is easy you can set up in one place in the house and never have to revisit it so I hope I said everything I need to say and that gives you some idea of what we're, what we're working with okay thanks bye